everyone and today we are going to talk about the five things you should know in owning a Ducati Panigale 1299. Alright everyone we'll get right into it. We'll go down from five to one on the countdown. So at number five on our list is that the gas mileage is not good on this thing. So like any uh, liter bike or 1000cc and above bike, uh, this bike um, it gets about um, I don't know, maybe a hundred miles on a tank, and it's got like a 4.7 uh, gallon tank, I believe. Uh, so yeah, I find myself having to fill up a lot. I actually fill up a lot more than I do on my CBR 1000 Double R. Of course, it has a little bit of a smaller engine, 998 cc on that Honda, while this guy has 1185, I believe. Yeah, they call it 1299, but it really only has 1185 cc. Uh, so that's number five to know that you're going to pay a lot in gas and the mileage isn't good, but that's expected. At number four on our list is going to be maintenance is pretty expensive and so are the parts and aftermarket parts for this bike. So again, just like owning a expensive car or a different, you know, higher brand, whatever you want to call it, BMW, etc. This bike, which I knew going into it, owning a BMW S1000 RR in the past, uh, parts were getting expensive and so was the maintenance. There's like one uh, actual Ducati um, dealer here in the Tampa area, which is uh, Eurocycles of Tampa Bay. And uh, it's about an, a good solid hour drive from uh, my current house down in uh, southeast Tampa. And I knew going into it, like I said, that a maintenance is gonna be expensive and the parts are gonna be expensive. I've spent um, a couple thousand on upgrades so far. Uh, shout out to Moto Million uh, down in uh, Miami area, Moto Million, who does a lot of parts for Jared Campisi also in his bike builds. Uh, but that's where I've ordered a lot of my parts. Uh, also Ducati uh, of Omaha, which this bike came from, shout out to them. They are a great online retailer for Ducati parts. And um, if you talk to them nicely, they might just give you a discount. Luckily, uh, Ducati, you know, when they redid their engines uh, a couple generations ago, especially for the 1199 and above, uh, I guess you could say the uh, 899 also for the smaller version. The service animals are a lot more in between services, which is a great thing, because I was one of the complaints about Ducati in the past as a maintenance and a service and they break down but they've greatly improved the company hence why about a 1299 and i just love this thing guys so i uh, just know that number four on the list is going to be high prices for parts and maintenance coming in at number three on our list is going to be the oem mirrors or the stock mirrors suck so as you can see on my 1299 i have put the crg mirror deletes on there uh, the turn signals and they work so much better and phenomenal guys uh, here's a little example we got the uh, turn signal that way turn signal that way and it also does the four-way flashers so you have the awesome turn signals like i showed you and also i had to get the crg aero mirrors as you can see the bar end mirrors and i bought some rhino mount bar ends for them to mount to so these mirrors are a lot more uh, user friendly, I guess. You can see a lot more to your side and what's behind you. Uh, they're not as friendly as having them right here, I will say that. But those OEM mirrors, they don't fold. That's the main thing, guys, that it just kills me. Especially when you're talking about garage space and you know having the mirrors fold in. I'm used to having my Honda and the uh, S1000 RR that I had. But the uh, mirrors on this, they don't fold, they break, those OEM mirrors. And they're like $230 or $250 if you want to replace them. So I went ahead and did the upgrade. I think it personally looks more awesome with the mirror delete, having these uh, turn signals on here and the CRG mirrors on the bar end. It just, it makes it look mean. I don't know why, like muscular. And so with that, that's the third thing you should know about owning a Panigale. Coming in at number two on our list of five things you should know about owning a Panigale in a second woo, is the engine heat is almost unbearable. So before I bought the Panigale, I'd always heard about the heat off the engine and it's actually down here in the frame area, guys. And you know, I'm like, oh yeah, all motorcycles get warm. And then I actually test rode a 1299. And if you haven't checked out video, here's a link in the right corner above. And after that test ride, I was actually quite shocked 
Now I did test ride the V4 also, the V4S actually, and the heat was significantly less. And the reason the heat is so bad on this bike is because the exhaust actually curls up under the seat area, if you didn't know that, and then it exits out the bottom. The issue is it gets that frame so hot. I can feel the heat radiating now. And here's the interesting part, guys. So shout out to Ducati Spacers, DucatiSpacers.com, Kevin actually, uh, for creating the Ducati heat shield. And it's actually a kit that is, he cuts it uh, specifically to fit the inside of the frame and the inside of the uh, engine covers on the side of the bike uh, to reduce the heat. And there's a piece that goes underneath the seat. Uh, it just sticks on there with epoxy, never comes off unless you really wanted to. It can, you could yank it off if you had to. And from Shift Tech, I bought the $12.99 frame covers, the carbon fiber ones that also have heat shielding inside of those. Unfortunately, guys, the bike is still hot. Almost unbearably hot. If you had leathers, you'd probably be good. I'm actually wearing my Dainese textile pants, which are awesome, by the way. Got them from Revzilla. Shout out to Revzilla. And I can just feel the heat coming through, guys. And these pants are actually a lot thicker than wearing, like, jeans or regular, like, cargo pants. And Lord help you if you try to wear shorts on a Ducati. You're, you're either brave or dumb. <laughs> I don't know which one more. Uh, but, yeah, guys, that's the other thing to expect. That's number two on the list. The heat is unbearable. Yeah, like I said, it's better on the V4, V4S, uh, which might be my next bike in the future. We'll see. Uh, but definitely, guys, watch out for the heat. All right, and coming in at number one on our list of things you should know on an Apanagali is you're going to get a lot of questions and people asking you to rev it up and sit on it. I know that sounds funny, guys. But, um, you know, like I've said, I've owned other sport bikes. I personally think my Honda is one of the prettiest bikes on the planet, besides this guy. And no matter where I go, guys, I always have someone stop, uh, try to get some pictures, like, you know, I have for my uh, Instagram page. I think I take some pretty decent pictures. I've gotten better uh, over the years. And wherever I go, people come up to me, and uh, they're like, hey, that's a Ducati, huh? And I'm like, yeah, it sure is. Uh, Panagali, woo, nice. And I'm like, yes. They're like, is it fast? And that's when I kind of chuckle to myself. And then, of course, they always want to like, oh, may I sit on it? And I'm like, sure, you know, like, no biggie. Uh, it's pretty funny. And there's other YouTubers that have said the same. They didn't expect that the uh, Panagali would draw so much attention. But it's like an exotic bike. Um, you don't see a lot. I've seen maybe two or three the entire I don't know I've lived in Tampa almost uh, eight nine months and uh, I think one was just a, a 959 and uh, I've only seen one other 1299s it kind of like made my day and you know I just think that's pretty cool that this bike is a conversation starter you know it's like I was saying it's like exotic um, people don't see like Ferraris Lamborghinis not to compare the two by any means especially price but people come up and they're like, man, that is a pretty bike. And and then sometimes they're like, I don't even know what a Ducati is. It's, <laughs> where is that from? You know, once you say it's Italian and they're like, oh, okay. Like a Lamborghini Ferrari for motorcycle. You're like, yeah, man, cool. And then of course, at the end, they always want to hear it. And then I explain, I have the Akrapovich exhaust, which is the aftermarket special exhaust. And then they're like, ooh, and then like, I rev it for them a couple times and I get some smiles, especially cool when uh, kids, you know, hear it and everything, they get a big old smile out of it. And uh, one time I was taking pictures and I had a cop come up to me uh, and I kind of was like, you know, uh, I'm just taking pictures to myself. But no, he was like a Harley guy and he just really wanted to know about this bike and he thought it was cool. And I just was like, man, that's, that's actually pretty cool. You know, it's always good to have those guys on your side. So that's going to conclude our video on the top five things you need to know in owning a Panigale. I know there's a ton of more things, but I tried to limit it to just five specific things that always pop up in my mind. Uh, if you own a Panigale or have a buddy that owns one, leave comments below on other things that maybe I missed or, or important things that you think everybody else should know. I think that'd be pretty cool. And I'd be privileged if you uh, like this video, please give a big old thumbs up. 
subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I know we're approaching 3,300 subs at this point, and I appreciate every single one of you guys. So with that, everyone ride safe. Take care. Until next time, I'll catch you later.